y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about a gear decision that I had to make for my PCT through hike and that was which traction device I was going to use in the snow and especially in the Sierra Nevada. When I had to make the decision between micro spikes and crampons, I really had no experience in the snow or ice. There was like the one time, it was my last day on the AT and I climbed Mount Katahdin. I had snow and ice that day and then one other time. But before that, I really had no experience in those conditions. But looking at the different gear lists of PCT hikers who threw hikes before me, I knew that I was gonna need one or the other, especially with 2017 being such a high snow year. And as I Google searched, and delved into some information, I realized that this is a rather hot topic, even though it's dealing with snow and ice, see what I did there. But a lot of backpackers tend to give like these absolute pieces of advice. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm just gonna tell you what I did, what others around me did, you know, what seemed to work and maybe what didn't, and then let you know some things to think about as you make your own decision. First, let's talk about what micro spikes and crampons are in case you're like me before the PCT and have no idea really what they are. So again, they're both like traction devices, especially for winter hiking or just hiking in hard snow and ice and you know something to give you more grip that just the tread on your boot or trail runner is not going to give you. Micro spikes have like a rubber ring around them. You just slide them onto your shoe. They're real easy to put on. They have a webbing of chains and then little spikes that just kind of bite into the ice and the hard packed snow and give you again a little more traction. Now they're nice for hiking. Some people even, you know, run in them if it's icy in the winter where they live, but they're not really meant for extremely steep slopes. They're fairly inexpensive, so they're gonna run you anywhere from like 40 to $70. I think I got, you know, a knockoff pair. I didn't have a good brand or anything like that. I think mine costs about 40 to $50. They're relatively light. I think my pair weighed about 11 ounces and they're very packable because you know you can just kind of ball them up they're they're very flexible and um, can be stashed anywhere in your pack of course I recommend somewhere easy to access that way when you need them you know you're gonna actually pull them out and use them they're simple to put on I never really had to like stop and put them on I did sometimes just to take a break but especially once I got used to putting them on uh, I could just stand there and kind of pull them up over my trail runner without having to you know take the pack off and all that there can be some variations in material you know what kind of metal the spikes are and things like that but they're just pretty straightforward to use and you can use them with trail runners or hiking boots also the thing that I appreciate about micro spikes is that you don't really have to practice like a technique you know when you're walking on snow or ice uh, of course with any type of traction device it's good to kick in your steps so you really get a good bite into that ice or hard snow um, but other than that it was kind of a no-brainer you just pull them on and go so crampons are more for mountaineering and climbing steep slopes and extreme ice and snow. They have three different types of binding and that's how they attach to your footwear. So those are strap-on, step-in, or a hybrid of the two. The spikes on crampons are noticeably larger than those on micro spikes, so they're gonna be anywhere from like a half inch to three quarters of an inch. They're all around just kind of more intricate, you know, a little more difficult to actually put on and, you know, just to learn really why it is designed the way it is for what purpose you want to use it for. Crampons are going to run a little bit more expensive. So depending on what they're made out of or what brand they are, you know, just all the different variables about them, the purpose that they're going to be used for, um, they're going to be probably about a hundred dollars plus. Now crampons are more rigid, so they should be paired with a boot of some sort. Some allow for more flexible boots like hiking boots, and then others are going to be more like your rigid mountaineering boot. They are heavier than micro spikes, so they're gonna run you about probably in the range of two pounds or so. There are exceptions, there are ones that are lighter, of course, but just, you know, as a general average number to give you. Now, like I said, crampons are going to be a little more of a hassle to put on, so it's gonna take more effort than just like pulling the rubber op over your footwear like you do with micro spikes. So probably gonna have to sit down, take the pack off, um, might not be a big deal to some people who just enjoy taking a break anyway, but that is something to keep in mind. Also with crampons, it really is recommended that you practice with them before you get into a situation where you're actually going to need them. I guess there is a bit more of like, you know, learning a technique. And then also something to keep in mind is if you don't know how to properly use them and you're falling down with them, 
Uh, they can cut up your leg pretty bad. I mean, again, you've got these sharp spikes that are meant to dig into ice that are like a half inch to three quarters of an inch. So they could do some damage. So at this point, some of you are probably like, well, Dixie, you just said all these good things about micro spikes and all these terrible things about crampons. So is there really a decision to make here? Well, yes, crampons are gonna give you much more of a bite when you're going up steep, icy slopes. So you're gonna have more stability and be able to really, you know, kick in well and just feel real secure as you're going up a steep slope. So all in all, was I happy with my decision of micro spikes? I'd say yes. I decided, you know, if the trail got bad enough, I could always swap out to crampons when I got to a town or, you know, if I couldn't make it through and it was bad enough, I could always backtrack and go back to the town that I started in and swap out to crampons. There were probably two areas in all of the Sierra Nevada that I felt like I would have really appreciated having crampons and just some extra bite into the ice as I was going up and over some passes. One of those was Forester Pass, which there were no footholds already, you know, made on the way up. It was literally like Spider-Man climbing up a steep slope. And then the second time was on Mather Pass, and that's because I had gotten myself into a bit of a tight spot. Uh, I went from snow to rock and then, you know, was trying to get back on the snow, but it was loose scree in one spot and just a rock boulder that fell straight down and uh, it was so steep and that's why I thought I would feel better getting to that rock section and kind of taking a break. But uh, once I got there and realized how steep it was, I really wish that I'd had some crampons to just, you know, go up and around the rocky area and just avoid it altogether. I did have a pair of crampons in mind that I was going to switch to, and those are the Cthulhu K10s. They are designed to work with trail runners. They're just more flexible. Um, and that was just a winner for me because me personally, I had trouble with hiking boots on the Appalachian Trail. They gave me tendonitis in my Achilles and they are a lot lighter than your typical crampons. They're about 21 ounces. I know a lot of people will say, well, you should have gone with crampons and practiced properly beforehand. Maybe so, but there isn't an abundance of ice and snow in Alabama. So again, not telling you what to do, but I knew what the risks were and went with the micro spikes. I would say about eight out of the 10 people that I hiked around at the time that I was in the Sierra Nevada had micro spikes. Now for the ones who entered during that time frame and used crampons, most of them said that they were very happy. They felt very secure in all of their steps, you know, never never really questioned if they had enough traction. There were some that said they felt they were a little bit overkill and didn't really use them that much. But the thing that I kept in mind is some of the people who used crampons said that they felt like they didn't put them on every time that they probably should have, just because it kind of got tedious to stop and put them on. And then, you know, I saw people trying to avoid walking on rocks. If you had some snowy icy patches and then a transition of rocks and then snowy icy patches again, they would just say, forget it. You know, I'm not gonna stop and take them off and put them back on and they just wouldn't fool with them. I knew for myself that I didn't wanna have that opportunity to be lazy. Uh, the, the micro spikes again were so easy to pull on. Uh, so I never had to worry about that. One thing that somebody mentioned that I didn't even really think about uh, was the sun cups. So they felt like even when the sun cups were icy because it's, it, they're basically like divots melted into a big snow field. So it's like, you know, a sun cup. It's just where it's melted. It's real uneven. You know, you have to watch every single little step and it's, it's very slippery when it's all frozen solid, especially when you're in just trail runners or just boots. And somebody mentioned that using the crampons, just the way the sun cups were, they would find themselves falling and twisting an ankle regardless. I mean, you know, I fell even with my micro spikes a lot, but they said that it made them uneasy to do that in their crampons because of just falling and cutting their leg with one of the spikes. In summary though, some of the things that you should consider, the snowfall. So, you know, on the PCT, the year that you're going to hike it, is it a high snow year? Is it a very low snow year? Is it average? You know, just how much snow is going to be there when you enter? When are you planning on reaching Kennedy Meadows and hitting the Sierra Nevada. And, and you don't have to make this decision right now. I mean, unless you're pretty certain you wanna go with crampons and you wanna practice with them or whatever. But, um, you know, it's something that I didn't decide until I was on the trail 
and uh, I knew like, yes, there is still a whole lot of snow. And then also, what is your preferred footwear? Are you totally against hiking boots or were you thinking about swapping a boots during the Sierra Nevada anyway? You know, I know some people do that, but for me, I prefer to wear trail runners all the time, unless there was some reason I couldn't. And then also, what is your level of experience? Have you used crampons before or have you hiked in snow before and you're, pretty comfortable with micro spikes so you want to try something different you just have to decide what works best for you and what you're comfortable with and again you're gonna hear both extremes you know I had outfitters telling me you're gonna die if you don't wear crampons I mean they might not have said it that extreme but it was like no you have to have crampons and then I had people say oh you'll be absolutely fine with micro spikes for the 2017 snow year I definitely would not have gone with less than micro spikes so like yak tracks or you know just wearing my regular trail runners now as a side note some of you might be wondering like when when do I need to get my micro spikes or crampons or whatever? Um, I did use micro spikes on San Jacinto and then I thought I might need them on Mount Baden Powell, ended up not using them there. Um, and then as far as when to get them for the Sierra Nevada, a lot of people got theirs at Kennedy Meadows, but I knew I was going to resupply in Lone Pine. So I just held off and had them sent to Lone Pine and I didn't need them in between that stretch. But again, the snow could be completely different the next year. So you just have to kind of feel it out while you're on trail. All right, y'all. Well, that is it for today. And if you have any questions about my experience with micro spikes or, you know, what I saw other people do with crampons, please feel free to comment that below. Oh, and then also if any of y'all are watching this and have section hiked in the Sierra Nevada or done the JMT or through hike the PCT and you have experience with both micro spikes and crampons and you can speak to this or you know even if you have experience with one and you'd like to share uh, please do that in the comments also because it could really help somebody and give them some information that I may have not included today. Thank y'all so much for watching. And if you would like to support the work I do here, the easiest way for you to do so at no additional cost to you is to visit DixieAZ.com before you do your Amazon shopping. You just go through that link and then continue your shopping as normal and you will be supporting the work I do here. Thank y'all so much and we will see y'all next time.